someone started in service recently and within about a week or two they quit and I asked for feedback and this gentleman was kind enough to give me some feedback and he said he back tested it for a few months June through October 2020 and was disappointed in results the month looked at did not appear the months I looked at did not appear to be that difficult in terms of volatility or tradability I enjoyed the material especially trading psychology although it seemed repetitious at times I do beat a dead horse that's a different conversation altogether I am curious you obviously have a history of your trade recommendations do you have a history of results well before we get into some of that the first thing I did was I pulled up the chart from last year and I'm like oh shoot yeah it's kind of a big blue arrow I, I suppose you could draw and then I got to thinking about it and says, well, wait a minute. He said June through October. And when I plotted that period, it looked a little bit more different. Now, the market on a net-net basis, on a closing basis, was up 7%. But it went up, it went down, it went up, it went down. And then it finally had a decent trend, and then it began to implode. Then it went up and then it went down again. And even though it went up 7%, there were a heck of a lot of zigs and zags during that period. And one thing I did notice that was kind of interesting is if he would have started his analysis just a few days later, he would have noticed that the market only went up no percent, at least from the high to the lows, actually 0%. And what is that, June, July, August, September, October, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Wednesday. Five months. So on a net net basis, at least from the June high to the end of October, it made zero percent move. Now, and I'm going to flesh this out in just one second. But it's hard to make money as a trend follower when the market's going up, going down, market going up, going down. What has to happen is it has to persist in its trend. So right around here, you start getting long, more than likely, and then you can see we had this sharp reversal and it was a big enough reversal to where you would start shorting and then of course went straight back up again and then it went straight back down so that's not an easy period to trade and and what i replied to this gentleman was i'd like to see what some other trend followers did provided of course they were true to form and not try to somebody that did reverse to the mean trading or something which they probably would have gotten rewarded for except for one little spanking possibly in between now, just getting back to the results real quick, my official policy is I don't publish official results. And one reason, there's a whole bunch of reasons why, but one reason is the discretion, a little bit of discretion makes the service work a heck of a lot better. And I'm not talking about every day, all day. It might be only once a quarter where you have a near miss on a profit target, maybe twice a quarter. On occasion, especially on a near miss, you might have a stop, a stop nick, or an opening gap reversal. And with just just a tiny bit of experience, and maybe setting alerts to let you know when these things are getting close, and possibly an alert as opposed to a stop, provided of course you would have time to put a stop in afterwards for a stop nick, you could certainly improve the performance. And as I'll say in one second, I also don't do any compounded just to keep the math easy. The count is always 100 grand, whether or not, hypothetical 100 grand, whether or not the portfolio is underwater or not, or recent trades are underwater or not. And if things are going really well, I don't compound higher. And I'll flesh that out in just a minute. Now, one thing that I, I want to kind of touch upon tonight is that I kind of see it as more than just a tip sheet. And I think that everyone here understands what I'm saying. But to those who are new to it, just keep in mind that there's a lot more to it than just the official recommendations. Anyway, there's a, a fact page. I don't want to bore you too much. I know too late with all this, but there's a fact page on my website that has all of those things spelled out in a lot more detail. Now, looking at that period, I went in and looked at all the closed trades and added in mark to markets. And unfortunately, the mark to markets 
in early June, within like the first day or so, were uh, fairly ugly based on where the stocks in the old portfolios portfolio was marked. And the service, not surprisingly, did not do so well. And in fact, this gentleman is right, it was down 9.1%. And you look at the market, well, the market was up 7%. Dave, what's wrong with you? Well, what's wrong with me was the market didn't go up in a straight line. It was all over the place. And there was a lot of jockey for position to get position. Now, here's the good news as far as the jockeying for position. If you would have checked in a week or two later, maybe a few weeks, I forget exactly when, one of the open trades, CRSR, which I marked to market at the end of October, stopped out for an additional gain of 54.81. And that's on the second loaf of that trade. So that goes a long ways towards getting you back into black. So I know I don't publish official results and for a variety of reasons. It, one is the past is not the future. You can see this chart looks okay, doesn't look so great from June to October, but over a year's year period of time from June to June, it looks pretty darn good. Well, hey Dave, could I expect to make 40 something percent next year? Um, I don't know. Probably not. <laughs> you know, I don't know. I, I hope to make a hundred percent from June to June or a thousand percent. That's what I'm aiming for. But I wouldn't be too upset with 42 percent, especially with no discretion and just following things mechanically and also no compounding. Now, let me just kind of unpack that a little bit. The reason we follow things or I follow things in the spreadsheet mechanically, even though I apply discretion, is just to make the math easy and so people can understand. For instance, I'm trying to think of which one. I think I stopped out of Simar today, which, which was one we've been in for a while. It got stopped out not that long ago. And I, there's a couple of more that come to mind that I use a little discretion on. And sometimes a little discretion really, really works, and sometimes it doesn't. But the one time that it really, really works can make all the difference in the world. And as I alluded to earlier, there's no compounding. Now, compounding, obviously, on the way down, you would be trading fewer and fewer shares, so your drawdown wouldn't be as bad. And once the market began to rally, you would be trading more and more and more shares and look better and better. Unfortunately, like everything, that cuts both ways. But I'd be willing to bet if you compounded, especially with this nice little equity curve in here, it would be much, much better. Now, one thing to remember is the mark to markets of the open portfolio did kind of accelerate this higher. It would probably be a little bit smoother equity curve if I were to smooth out the mark to markets, not to uh, to June, okay, to the beginning of June. It would probably look a little bit better. So what happened, what I'm trying to say is I went in and there were mark to markets that were done, obviously going back to October, but then from then forward, the mark to markets were just with the recent June portfolio. So this is kind of exacerbated. This is These are actual numbers as far as following mechanically, but it's kind of exacerbated. It didn't jump this much overnight. It's, it was more of a gradual climb higher. And I just don't have the time to go in and, and smooth that out for you guys. And if somebody wanted to, that would be fantastic. But I don't think you have to. You kind of get the idea or the point I'm trying to make here is it's very difficult to look at just one period with any methodology, not just my methodology. What you want to do is look over a period of time. And ideally, you want to look at a bear market, a bull market, and some choppy periods in between. And I've tried, believe me, everything under the sun. If you name a methodology, I'd be willing to say that I tried it and probably lost a lot of money trying it. This is the best that I found after many years of searching this hybrid approach where we're looking to take a swing trade profit off and stick around longer term. And we have some positions, believe it or not, that were put on last July, I think, at least one, and quite a few that were put on last fall. And hopefully, I know I just said hope, Hopefully we can su survive this little correction we're going through. And that's something I don't want to talk about too. And 
we're with some of these positions next year and next July and next August, September, and so on and so forth. The Facebook page is a form of discretion and can help from peers. Most of the time, the Facebook, most of the Facebook crowd crowd did quite well last year. I was at 27%. Yeah, 27% is is fantastic. I mean, if that's if I get 27%, I I would not be complaining. Obviously, I want to try to knock it out the park and I want a triple digit year, but 27% is nothing to sneeze at. In fact, if you can make 20% a year and compound that, you would own the world pretty quickly. And if you get bored, do the math on that. It works out pretty nicely. I think your account doubles every few years and just, you know, you only have to be around for a few years to have that happen and do exceptionally well. Now, a couple of thoughts in looking at all this. Compounding would obviously help, okay? And and I think compounding would, even though it can cut both ways, as you saw in the chart, we had that period where we're just kind of grinding it out, grinding it out, wondering if this stuff is ever going to work. And all of a sudden, bam, it starts working. But if you could trade maybe smaller size, because obviously your account's going down during that period, and then start to step on the gas a little bit, not throw caution to the wind, you're still trading at 2%. And believe me, it it, it is kind of hard. And, and I've had a lot of clients over the year tell me that, Dave, you know, my account's a little bit bigger and at 2%, it's a pretty big, it's a pretty big number. And I have some accounts split up to where they're small enough to where I could I could stomach the losses in, in the account. But the accounts that have grown a little bit, that two percent is is quite a big spanking. And and I I I took that spanking on a few of these positions this week. And it, it's not it's not easy. But over time, if you can catch these nice momentum periods, especially with the compounding, you'll do exceptionally well. Now, like I said a minute ago, discretion helps considerably. I guess I should put can help considerably. There wasn't a tremendous amount of discretion going back. I'll have to go in and look at it in a little detail, but there was some here and there. And I actually pulled up some of the trades where in the side of my my own personal tracking spreadsheet, I'll put uh, stop Nick or Ogre for open gap reversal. Let's say something gaps below the stop and then comes back up. Well, in a case like that, I would stick with the position. And I actually went in and some of them I didn't I didn't exactly print money, but instead of losing two thousand dollars on a hundred K account, on an account that I trade similar to the model, which I use for all my analysis as far as like the education is concerned that you're getting here tonight and that I preach and teach. I and on one of them, I think it was I'm trying to think of the name of it, but it was one that we lost two thousand on mechanically, but somehow I was able to break even. Not that a grand poo not that I always do as well. Sometimes I do worse, but it's just an example of discretion. And I went and looked at two or three of these discretionary calls, and luckily I saw where I was able to do a little better. And there's nothing secret about it. This discretion. We actually, as Craig was just generous enough to say. We actually talk about these things when a little discretion is needed. And I'll even pop in to the Facebook group and say, hey, guys, you know, this is a stop, Nick. Let's see if we can hang on. Or this is a near miss on a profit target. And that's one of the most frustrating things is to have something get really close to a profit target, not quite get there. And then you split hairs and not take profits. So little, just a few little things. And, and I, I kind of talk about these things over and over again. One place to to get a lot of this, if you're a little newer to the methodology, would be to go through the Q&A. And we talk a lot about discretion in there because I get a lot of questions on that and I've answered those. But then in more recent times, we haven't done any Q&As in a while, as you know, because the Facebook group has been taking care of all that. Anyway, so just ask in Facebook if you have any issues. And to my surprise, you guys have really you know taken the ball and ran with it is for as answering the questions and doing a good job. So I appreciate, I really appreciate you guys helping out the other guys. When I started this group, I'm like, okay, well, I guess I'll just be sitting there all day answering questions or whatever, Grand Poo Bah, you know, blah, blah, blah. But you guys have really done a fantastic job. So I thank you for that. As I alluded to a minute ago, trends must follow through in order to profit from them. As Greg Morris once said, 
in order to make money in a trend, you must first have a trend to make money. <laughs> so, and then follow through is a killer. And on the short side, it's really tricky because markets look like they're rolling over, getting ready to tank. And if you don't pile on, or at least put on a few shorts, that's the first little sign of the market beginning to crack. And that market does crack, you're gonna miss the crux of the downside. However, if it goes straight back up, like you saw earlier in the earlier slide, then obviously you would lose money on that trade. So if you go back during that period, I don't remember exactly how many they were, but there were a few shorts that did not work. You could, if you took those out, I know it's all hypothetical, but if you took them out hypothetically, things would look a lot better. But you could see by looking at those, you could see where and why I began to put them on, but unfortunately, the trend didn't materialize. Or fortunately, if you want to look at it that way, as I often say, if we start putting on shorts and we get stopped out of all of them and the market goes straight up, that's fine with me because we'll just make money on the long side. I'd rather do that anyway. As I think I said earlier, it could take six to eight months. And that's a, that's a tough, kind of a tough pill to swallow. That's a long time to believe in something, right? And, and believe me, I get beat up too and I wonder too. And you know, I felt like God last couple of weeks until from Friday to now when things started to get whacked a little bit or a lot of it. But it can take six to eight months and occasionally a little longer. If you go in and look at that June to July period, that was about five months of underperformance. But then over the next few months, knock on wood, thank God, we began to capture that momentum cycle again and things begin to work out nicely. Now, a few big outliers can make all the difference in the world, and that's one of the pitfalls of trend following. I don't know if I, I think I wrote an article back when I was doing a lot more random thoughts, why trend following is hard. And I'm also, I also have a, an article in my head, the pitfalls of trend following. So the big outliers or one of the pitfalls, also an opportunity too, right? but you have to catch an occasional outlier for the most part. You can have a period of time where everything sort of works. It works really well. And then other times it's very important that you capture the occasional outlier. And that's why we keep chipping away at it, chipping away at it, chipping away at it. Every now and then we get something that goes up 600%. And I'll show you how that's actually a good problem, obviously, but a problem nonetheless to have. So a few outliers are important. As I said many times before, when I said one good streaky, I think I meant to say one good streaky period, or one good streak, can make your year. And that's when you get into a print money phase where everything you touch is just making a lot of money or you're hitting quite a few of those and i make it sound elusive because sometimes it is outliers and and i've told the story a thousand times but just a long story endless peter mothy once invited me to speak to a group in dallas and after the speech he gave me some constructive criticism he said use the word streaky you're making it again this is word elusive you're making it sound a little too elusive and i thought to myself well it is streaky and it can be streaky and most people give up now two weeks is not nearly enough time to look at something unless you're looking at the open portfolio and say okay well maybe this guy can do this again let's see but you do have to give it time and that that goes for any methodology but obviously i'm focusing on my stuff. Now, as I alluded to a second ago, a good problem to have is when you get in a, in a stock at lower levels and you take your partial profits and you trail that stop loosely, then all of a sudden the position becomes quite sizable. So if you look back here when we got into CPE, a 10% move was roughly, let's say, a dollar, round numbers, and one dollar times 500 shares, this is after you hit the initial profit target, is, or a 10% move, so your account will go up and down $500 per 100K, 
on a 10% move. Well, recently, when I was updating the spreadsheet and quite frankly, looking at my equity all day long, <laughs> that same 10% move is now six points and on a 500 share remainder position, six times five obviously is 35. So that's a $3,500 swing in let's say a 100K account, okay? just to keep the math easy. Well, regardless of what size your account is, if you're trading at proper size, those leftover shares would have gone from a half a percent swing on your account on a 10% move to a three and a half percent swing on a 10% move. Now, your initial margin that you put up is the same. Your margin doesn't go up, right? But your percent of the portfolio in a position goes up. So what's 500 times, that's like $20,000, $30,000 in this position, which was started with, with much, much less money. So you, you have more and more percentage-wise of a stock in your portfolio. What I recommend you do is if you come in and this thing is up two or three or four points a day, maybe put in a trailing stop on uh, even like 100 shares, okay, and just peel off a little bit of those shares. So if it's up around 50 bucks a share or so, and you trail a stop intraday and peel off those shares by the end of the day, let's say 100 shares, well, you've taken $5,000 at around 50 bucks, right? You've taken that off the table and you're smooth out those equity swings. Now, unfortunately, if the stock continues to run higher, you're going to not obviously make as much money longer term but you might be able to sleep a little easier at night if you sort of have lightened up during the trend a little bit. I'm not saying dump your entire position, but maybe peel off a couple hundred shares or so to where you're, you don't have quite as much exposure. And that only matters, obviously, when the stock begins to tank or if the overall market begins to tank, kind of like right now. 